Part 3 Using Add on Instruction to Collect Diagnostics in Rockwell Automation PLC. So now we are ready to proceed on to Stage 3 of our integration process. Programming an AS Interface Add on Instruction specifically for this scenario in a Rockwell Automation PLC. The slide outlines the four steps necessary to take advantage of the special add-on instruction. First, we must import in the add-on instruction. Second, we will create a rung to move mailbox data. Third, we will configure some input parameters. And finally, we will run the add-on instruction. So for stage three in the integration process, we are back in the RS Logix 5000 editor. In our scenario, the K20 EV24 gateway is separate from the KE4 safety monitor, such that what we need to introduce is an add on instruction specific to extract information from the KE4 safety monitor. Let me show how easy this is. The next step in our process is to import in the add on instruction. The add-on instruction is not available with the AS Interface Toolkit. Thus, the add-on instruction will need to be requested through the Pepperon Fuchs Product Manager. Let's begin. We'll right-click on the add-on instruction and select Import Add-on Instruction. From there, we need to locate the location for our add-on instruction. The name of the add-on instruction that you want for this specific scenario is PF underscore 16 underscore channel safety diagnostics. So be sure you import in the required add-on instruction. The import, rather simple. And now we have the add-on instruction represented and available for use. Having imported in the add-on instruction, we are now ready to begin building the ladder program. The ladder program is a two-step process. The first step is to create a rung to move mailbox data. So as we learned in topic number five, copy instructions will be needed to transport information to and from the mailbox. This mailbox is required for all add-on instructions. So let's introduce that line of code. Next, we will create a new rung and add our add-on instruction that we imported in. So in our toolbar, we'll select add-on and look for the new add-on instruction and introduce that in our rung of code. With this add-on instruction, we need to define the name In providing the name, we want to make sure that we create a new tag for our structure of the add-on instruction, and that allows some of the other parameters in the instruction to be populated. Our mailbox in and out will be what was defined above. And then we have a new parameter called index colors. This will be very interesting as we go online with the instruction to see the value of our index parameter. Here again, since that parameter does not exist, we need to create it, a new tag for it. And this allows our rung of logic to be validated. All the parameters are populated associated with the instruction. To have some control over the instruction, we also want to introduce a trigger bit. This allows us to trigger the instruction when we want an update to occur. And since our trigger parameter does not exist, we'll create that as well. At this point, we have completed stage three of our integration process. 
Now we are ready to download our program to the PLC. So before we download our program, one important parameter I overlooked in the add-on instruction is the safety monitor address. In Simon Plus, we programmed a base address of 14 for our safety monitor. Thus, our add-on instruction needs to have that also represented. So let's download our program to our controller. At this point, as we go online with our program, we immediately notice that we have a healthy communications with our gateway. And we're ready to trigger our add-on instruction. However, before we trigger the add-on instruction, I want to introduce a few additional windows in our arrangement. Here we have all the active screens necessary to conduct the live demonstration. In the right-hand side, we have the Logix 5000 editor with our add-on instruction. In the upper left corner, we have the Simon Plus program, which is active in our KE4 safety monitor. In the lower right corner, we have the user manual for our KE4 safety monitor. The page I have zeroed in on is page 36, because this allows us to diagnose the status of our safety circuit for the various conditions to our OSSD. Let's begin the live demonstration. So, Initially, our safety circuit is active and all in a green state. What we are going to be monitoring is the state of the OSSD1, because this is what we've represented in our safety circuit. What we will do next is produce a stop condition on the safety circuit. So Connie will press the e-stop, and at this point, we need to trigger our bit for our add-on instruction. What immediately becomes evident after the done bit has been set is our OSSD state is now at a value of 4. So as we look down in the user manual for our state of a 4, it is indicating it's a red permanent lighting. Our safety circuit in Simon Plus also reflects that our state of OSSD is also in a permanent red state. So what we have done here is we've allowed ourselves the ability to monitor the state of the OSSD in the add-on instruction without having to go to Simon Plus directly to see that state. So next, what we want to do is release the e-stop. In releasing the e-stop, our Simon Plus program has changed state again. What we want to do is toggle our add-on instruction and see the state for our OSSD1. At this point, the state is at a value of 2, such that as we look on our chart in the user manual, we see the continuous yellow being noted as 2 and also representative in our safety circuit. The last step to reset the circuit completely is to press the 2 button red LED. In doing so, our OSSD changes back to a green state. And after toggling the trigger bit of the add-on instruction, we see now that the state of the OSSD is back to zero, and this is our green permanent lighting, our output being on. So now we saw the value of the add-on instruction in having the ability to monitor the states of your OSSDs in your safety circuit. I wanted to show an additional parameter that is very useful also to further help in diagnosing your safety circuit. Earlier, we spoke about the index parameter. The index parameter is something that also is very useful in further helping you troubleshoot the safety circuit. As we click on our program tags, the index parameter is noted as an array of tags. The size of the array could vary based on how complex your safety program is. If we put these in a monitor state, what we observe is all the various indexes noted. In our safety circuit in Simon, recall back, we had one workspace configured. This workspace consisted of three devices, an e-stop, a monitored start, and a stop category zero output. 
Each device has an index associated to them. The e-stop had an index 0, our monitored start push button index 1, and our OSSD index 2. As we look at this parameter, we could see it has values in each of these locations. For our e-stop, we have it at 0. The perimeter of the e-stop is highlighted in green. The green in our chart from our user manual for the KE4 indicates that this is a permanent green lighting associated to that device. Our index 1 device is surrounded by a yellow color. And as we look at this device, in our chart, a yellow is indicated by a value of 2, a continuous yellow. This is reflected in our PLC program as the value 2. Finally, our stop category device, our OSSD, is index 2. As we look at our chart, this is indicated by a red permanent color surrounding this device, and that's reflected again in the PLC. So in summary, we have taken an add-on instruction and been able to diagnose the various indexes of the devices in our safety program directly from the PLC. So now that we understand the states of our current devices in our safety program, let's toggle our instruction again after an action has happened. What I will ask Connie to do is press the e-stop in our safety program. Immediately what is observed in the safety program is that our circuit is all noted in red. As we go back into the PLC program and we toggle our add-on instruction, we should observe these changes once again. We wait for the done bit, proceed on to the program tags, and monitor the indexes. In the indexes, we note that all the indexes now are noted at 4, and as we reference our chart, these are all noted in a red permanent color. So the last action we'll take is I'll ask Connie to release the e-stop. Once again, I will ask Connie to press the red button on the monitored start, and this allows our circuit to turn green again. As we go back into our PLC program and toggle our add-on instruction, we'll observe the changes once again. We'll await the done bit, proceed on to the programming tags, monitor the tags, and observe everything is in a healthy active state. This completes the demonstration of our add-on instruction in the third phase of our integration process. Finally, in the presentation today, I wanted to make you aware of some updated AS interface literature. The first is the Maintenance and Troubleshooting Guide. This was released just recently in March of 2016. The link for the documentation is provided below. This guide provides helpful tips and tricks for troubleshooting and maintaining existing AS interface networks. I encourage you to use this guide because it also includes some helpful links to some YouTube videos that may help further in your maintaining and troubleshooting of AS interface networks. A second helpful document is the product overview guide for AS Interface. This was released again this year in June 2016. The intent of this document is really to help you be able to tell the story about AS Interface and all the key components that we discussed in the presentation today. It provides a high level overview of the product portfolio and the technical features of each of the products offered by Pepperell and Fuchs for AS Interface. So let's discuss how you could connect with us here at Pepperell and Fuchs. There are six easy ways this is possible. Tech support, ask the expert, our Pepperell and Fuchs website, our Twitter handle, our blogs, and our YouTube channel. Thank you for coming to the webinar today. Included on the slide is my contact information. I encourage each of you to keep in touch with me on any questions, concerns, 
you may have on AS Interface. Thank you.